Hi guys, this is Introducing Emmy, and we're going to do a tutorial today on using SketchUp to set up your scenes uh, for your comic or for whatever kind of art you're doing. Uh, I just want to mention real quick, this is not a modeling tutorial, so you're going to want a basic understanding of the following three programs. Uh, the first one being Photoshop or some other kind of drawing program like Open Canvas, Paint Tool Sci, Krita, there's a bunch. Uh, you're also going to want to know how to use SketchUp which is a free 3D modeling tool that used to be, I believe, owned by Google, and then they let it go, and now it's like free for everybody to use. Um, and it's more of like an architectural layout uh, modeling program as opposed to uh, a more organic program like ZBrush. So just keep that in mind, it, but it's very easy to use, and there's a bunch of tutorials in using SketchUp. And the third program you'll need is Pure Ref which is just a really basic uh, reference material organizing sort of tool. So again, you're going to want like a basic understanding of those three things. And uh, yeah, so we'll be good to go. So the first thing I want to mention uh, is I'm currently working on a redo, but you could be starting from ultimate scratch doing this tutorial. Uh, in this case, you'd want to have a sketch of the scene that you're working from. So this is my quote unquote sketch, except it's actually like an old version of the page that I want to do now. And uh, I just sort of threw a really rough filter over this and kind of moved the furniture around in the scene. And it gave me this little nice layout here with uh, my character Rose talking to this alien Hugh in her living room and her cat on the couch. So I took it uh, into its own file just to kind of clean it up a little further to make it more black and white. And I think it looks pretty splendiferous. And now this is a really easy thing to do. You just copy paste it into Pure Ref. Uh, again, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can, there we go. So in Pure Ref, what you're gonna do is either right click and go to settings. I actually have it transparent to mouse clicks right now. so. You your, da, 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 da. You're going to want to make it available to mouse clicks and then uh, you can see it just moved a little bit. You want to go to settings or control U and go to colors which is the middle uh, of the three options and just turn the master opacity all the way down. Now it will still be slightly visible and I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, like there's no way to completely like dissolve the image down to a zero opacity like you could in most drawing programs. I guess it's just the way the program works. So try to take it down as low as you possibly can. Um, if you need to, you might have to adjust the image in Photoshop to just make it a little more see-through, I guess, and then take it back into Pure Ref and kind of get it to where you feel uh, like it's working for you. So let's do that my draw ones back into the actual Photoshop window. And then you're going to want to go over to SketchUp. Uh, let me minimize Pure Ref for a second. Uh, this is a model of Rose's apartment that I've kind of piecemealed together over the years working on different scenes in her apartment. Now this isn't a modeling tutorial, but I should mention that, you know, some of the things in her apartment I've modeled, some of the things are models from the SketchUp warehouse, which is an online uh, kind of like a mod sharing community if you play Skyrim like the Nexus that's kind of what the sketched up uh, warehouse is like it's just objects that you can do whatever with for your scenes uh, and those two little ugly dolls right there are my stand-ins for Rose and Hugh in this shot so yeah some of this I've modeled some of it I've found and kind of patched together but at the end of the day none of this actually is in the finished comic it's just for reference for setting up my scenes. So what you're going to want to do is bring Pure Ref up with the transparent layout, which there it is. It's a little bit of a jumbly mess right now, but just work with me here. Now uh, you can either make it transparent to mouse clicks, uh, Pure Ref that is, make that transparent. That way you can work through your reference, meaning you can like, uh, I'll do it right now. Control T, by the way, if you're uh, using your keyboard. And that will make it transparent. That way I can work in Google SketchUp while looking uh, through my reference to try to find the right shot. And, well, my shot's down here, so it's kind of cheaty mode right now. Now, I prepared uh, this shot earlier, 
And I originally was using the couch and the coffee table as sort of my constant to try to reset up the shot. Now, m mind you, I drew the original in 2009, I want to say, maybe like late 2000. <laughs> no, it maybe yeah, like mid 2009, I think is when I drew it. Uh, the original. Uh, my skills have since improved, but normally when I sketch current pages and current work and I do this method, I would use like pieces of furniture to set up my shots because usually I get it pretty close in my sketches. Like I get the angles right. This is so far off <laughs> perspective wise that I'm just having to kind of feel it out. Um, but I was using the edge of the couch and the edge of the uh, coffee table originally to try to kind of cite the original scene. That's not really possible. You can see the kitchen table is like way off. Like just all the angles are a mess. Uh, this is the first version of the shot I did. Uh, Hugh and Rose's stands in, stand ins were in a slightly different location, but I couldn't really accurately get them into the shot. Either Ro the bottom of Rose was getting cut off, or in this case, the top of Hugh's head was getting cut off. I didn't want that. I wanted a full body in the shot. There's no reason you couldn't have full body for this shot. So then I went with this option. There it goes. Uh, by the way, I've saved these scenes ahead of time, so just to give you an idea. Now, this isn't exactly what my old shot used to be, but I feel it's a better option. I feel you get to see a little bit of her living room, uh, a little more of it anyway, that wasn't really in the original comic. You can see the entrance to her bedroom, her kitchen, and you could even see a teeny tiny bit of her kitchen table set. Um, from here, I'm going to have the shadows casting this way. She has these massive windows in the back of her apartment, and I think the the angle of the shadows going this direction from, what was that, upper right to lower left. I think that would make up a really nice shot. So now that I've got the shot found, so to speak, I uh, close pure ref. You want to make sure you do that or at least minimize it so you can't see it anymore. Um, now, I'm not super fancy about this part of the process. I just hit print screen a bunch of times until I'm sure that my print screen screenshotting button has worked. That doesn't always work. So you may need to go to uh, blah, 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 export 2D graphic and uh, I'll just throw it on the desktop for now. Oop. There we go. Uh, again, it can be a JPEG or a ping or whatever. The, this image is not going to be in the final version so I'm not, uh, you know, like nothing will be left of this once you get done working on it. So then you just go back into Photoshop and go find my image real quick. There it is. Open that up. So there it is, all nice and smoothly rendered. I actually don't usually render it out, so I don't normally get to see it this uh, nice. But even being this nice, um, I would still probably abstract it in some way by dropping a filter on it, like the oil paint filter. Uh, with the shine turned all the way down, please. Thank shine down. Thank you. And like stylization all the way up. I don't want to have anything left of the original image when I'm done working on it. I want to be left to my own vices to finish the scene. I mean, it's so fun if you're just like tracing, basically. I mean, I guess you could, but there's no reason to. But uh, from here, what I would do is copy that image and go back into my work file. I tend to work on my panels all separate uh, in their own work files so that I can draw comfortably outside the, uh, the borders of the of each individual page and that way I can you know comfortably like rotate things and flip things around and not have to worry about the uh, entire uh, open page open file so if I mess one you know if I mess the panel up that's all I mess up I don't mess up the entire uh, file so you just copy paste that back over you can see it's very very teeny tiny I believe there are settings you can mess with uh, within um, uh, Google Sketchup. I should just say Sketchup. I'm so used to calling it Google Sketchup. It was Google for a million years. But uh, there's usually settings that you can kind of mess with to get uh, what you're looking for. To have it render out bigger or smaller. So yeah, this was uh, pretty close. 
I might even rotate it some if I can find a corner. Oh, there we go. So I might do something more like that. Oops. You really should feel like you can do, uh, you know, whatever you want with it. I kind of like it. I sort of miss it being really close to the old one, but maybe having it thrown off a little like this is kind of fun, you know? I may even move Rose a little bit, or when I draw her, I might move her just a little bit closer to Hugh because I don't like that uh, she's sort of interfering with the edge of the couch. Yeah, so maybe something like that would be nice. It's a little off, but I feel like the character is the most important. Uh, but you could just do it. I do this a lot. I'll do multiple takes on a scene to try to see which is the best one. You could do something more like that, which was the original. One second. I'm kind of cutting off my own work. So this is uh, closer to the original. But depending on how much I feel like painting, as far as the backgrounds are concerned, I may not go this route. But uh, we'll see. So that gives you kind of a better idea of how to import your shots. And there are teeny children screaming outside my house. But uh, let me pause this real quick and show a few other examples on camera of backgrounds that have been generated using this technique. Okay, so here are some examples uh, just using my book as, or my upcoming book as a reference point. Uh, this is a shot in a hanger that was garbage in the original page, if you've seen it. Oh, look at the garbage. That was from like 2000, yeah, like early 2009. I think most of this book was produced in 2009, 2010, so this scene was definitely 2009. Anyway, so this was the original shot. I was read to filth on this shot for being so bad and I, I remember I had a really scathing review where they just they friggin hated this panel in particular <laughs> and I cried and cried but now uh, it, I think it's much more improved um, the model of the UFO is mine because I just I couldn't find one I was happy I think that's my model gosh now I don't know I have a lot of models of UFOs so I'm not totally sure I'm pretty sure this is mine. I remember doing the silhouette of it and modeling it. Maybe I'll show how to model a UFO and sketch up. But uh, the hanger was somebody else's and the people are all mine and I'm not sure about the chalkboard. But uh, so there it is all beautiful and referenced and everything and I think it looks gorgeous. So here's another shot. This is again a model of mine that I did with um, I think the lattice is just, yeah, the lattice is a texture that I drew. The stairs are somebody else's model, I think. And yeah, but the building is mine because, again, I couldn't quite find the sort of building I was thinking of in my head, so I modeled it. And I think it turned out pretty good. Though I was just looking at this page and I noticed one of these big word bubbles covers up most of it. So that might be getting moved before the final book comes out, like in the editing stage. Um, and that actually, that shot did not exist in the original. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Gosh, I sort of forget what the originals look like. Anyway, here's another shot. This is actually the inside of the previous building you just saw. Uh, the beds are not my models, but I believed I edited them so they only have three pipes in the headboard and footboards as opposed to uh, uh, whatever was there. I don't even remember what was there, but the beds are not my model. The room is my model. Uh, and the lights, I, gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> but uh, like I said, most of what, like most of the model itself doesn't actually end up in the comic. I end up drawing and inking over top of it and then it just sort of it's gone. By the end, I chew it all up, and it's something different and new. Uh, this is another model of mine. This is uh, Glasner's office, and uh, the equipment here is actually models of computer equipment from the 70s that probably has little 
to nothing to do with the kind of science that he's doing, but I thought they looked good, so I put them there. And uh, they remain to this day. Uh, and yeah, I don't really know much more to say about this. I finally replaced the model of Phyllis's tube after much hemming and hawing. For the longest time, it was just literally a cylinder coming out of the floor with like no curtains or anything. I, I always drew it appropriately. Uh, let me see if the original drawing is there. Yeah, so I, uh, it didn't have the curtains in the original. Uh, and I realized later on that they were kind of an important plot point so that Glasner could obscure the view of Phyllis if he wanted to or not. So you can kind of see it was a little different back then too, the way I had the office set up. It was kind of like a non, like there were no angles in the room. It was kind of, I knew there was a corner back here somewhere, but I didn't know where uh, anything else was. Now I have a better understanding of the layout of the room, having made the model, which is kind of a nice bonus. So that's that. And uh, Phyllis's bedroom, which is a pretty nice little model, if I do say so myself. The the desk, or whatever you would call this little beautician station, is not my model. The mirrors are my model. Uh, the, the station, I'm pretty sure, is a vintage uh, God, what do you call these? I, I don't have anything like this in my house. Like, a desk, I guess? But it's like where she does her makeup. Like, nightstand or beauty stand? I, I don't know. I'm making up words now. <laughs> but the uh, the desk is like a vintage desk from that time period. And uh, it's kind of nice going on Google. Ugh. Sorry, Google. It's nice going on the SketchUp warehouse to just see that these models exist, and uh, I think I did edit it somewhat, though. I don't think this is exactly what it looked like uh, when I originally got the model, but uh, uh, there's her bed and everything. It's just, it's so nice to be able to set up these shots and to, to really know what they look like. I mean, this is the original. So it's, it's like totally different, um, minus in how incredibly dark it is, but the, this kind of a seat would probably not have been used. I mean, there were little things I just didn't know about. I should mention, though, that uh, these little accoutrements in her bedroom, the alarm clock, like the makeup, the hairbrush, I think that was supposed to be a Bible or God only knows. That stuff still exists in the scene, but it's on a table right here that you can't see. It's like down a step. It's on the other side. There's this thing and it's over there. So her desk now kind of looks overly clean. But I guess she's a military girl. She has to keep that shit tidy. So, yeah, those are some of my uh, examples. Uh, I think that ought to do it. Uh, if you go through my comic, any, like, large shots, usually I used a model to reference them. Not always. Stuff like this. I mean, I can kind of figure this out on my own, you know. Like, uh, this was, I think, a model for reference for the bike and the uh, the surgeon's table or cadaver table, whatever you want to call those tables. But I think the nicest thing about setting your shots up in Google SketchUp, God, I'm so sorry, SketchUp. The nicest thing about setting your shots up in SketchUp is that they stay consistent. You don't have like furniture moving around or stuff disappearing and reappearing into the set. Like you just keep updating your sets as you need to. So if you like have a character that knocks over a chair and that chair never gets set back up, you just leave the chair over inside the set, and every time you go back to it, you're like, oh yeah, that chair got knocked over, now I don't have to worry about that. Little things like that make using SketchUp to set up your scenes really, really handy, so I'm a huge advocate of it. I feel people should use whatever tools are at their disposal. I'm not one of those people who's like, ooh, it's cheating, or, you know, whatever. It's, uh, I think it's just part of the artistic process. Technology and art meeting in a fusion of alien lovemaking. It's so great and wonderful. Anyway, so that is my little tutorial. Uh, I guess you technically didn't need to watch past like the first 10 minutes, but if you felt like seeing some examples, here they are. All right, I will see you guys later. Bye.